My name's Mike. And I'm Sean. And you're watching the Dark Shadow Ghost Tours After Tour Program. J.C. Thompson Building Edition. Yes, absolutely. 2015. <laughs> well, you know, I've got to set it so that they know about next year's. <laughs> absolutely. Right. So this is our first edition of the After Tour, okay? And here's how it's going to work. We're broadcasting live right now. We just sent out all the links to everybody. We're testing the audio and that kind of thing. It's the first time we've done this. Um, but... During the presentation, we're going, to, we're going to talk about some experiences of the, the last tour that we just had. And um, if you have any questions, please comment on Facebook or, or through the YouTube channel or anywhere that you want to. We're monitoring all the channels right now. Um, and uh, We'll gonna, try to get to your questions yeah, then later on the end, in the we're show. Gonna, we're going to go and answer any questions that, that people might have. Um, so... J.C. Thompson Building. What would you guys think? Was it a good place? Absolutely. Oh, I think, I think it was awesome. I mean, you know, the building never seems to let us down. You know, there's always a lot of good activity. Uh, you know, it always seems to attract a crowd. And it seems like every time we go, we get a little bit more, a little more and more and more each time. So, like the first time we went, we only had a couple of pieces of evidence, and since then, we've kind of added. Well, that's one thing that uh, we discussed before because we were like the second paranormal group actually to go in and do an investigation at the J.C. Thompson building. And we had a theory that we posed that um, the more a location is investigated over time, the more activity that, that you get. Um, I have to say, this is my vote, but uh, I have to say that Compared to the first time we were there, we did get a lot more activity. What do you guys think? I definitely agree. I, I, I would agree with that. Uh, so let me talk about the J.C. Thompson experience a little bit. Uh, it was a three-day event, and what we did was is we went in and helped Sarah, that's the owner of the, of the building, um, providing tours of the building during the day. And then at night, we had... Uh, Mike and Lee did tours. Don't yeah, Mike and Lee did the tours for us during the day. <laughs> we um, definitely weren't around. At night, uh, every night we had something different. Uh, the first night we did a presentation on uh, speaking, what was it, speaking with entities? Yes. Uh, where we went over and we showed uh, some of the techniques on how we do EVP sessions or how we use an SB7 or K2 meters, uh, things like that. Um, that was the first night that was... Wednesday, Thursday, 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 Thursday night. Thursday. Friday night, after the tours, we went in. We did another presentation. It was called uh, "Living in a Haunted House," and we went over uh, the symptoms of, you know, how you can tell whether your house is haunted or not, um, and then what you can do if it is, which is basically get a hold of us. But um, <laughs> commercial, um, <laughs> uh, and then Saturday night. We did an all-night ghost hunt, um, and that was the first time we broadcast live yes. um, on Google Hangouts. And what we did was we hooked our DVRs up and broadcast that uh, over the, the Google Hangout. And then we broke in a couple times to kind of tell you what we were doing and, and things. But you can actually watch the ghost hunt uh, while it was live. It was really cool. Now, here's, here's something that's really neat. If you didn't go on a ghost hunt with us, or even if you did, um, that video is still out there on our YouTube channel. You can actually go out there. It's it's almost eight hours long. But, you know, in your, if you're bored, it's raining, nothing to do. Scroll through. Yeah, you could watch it. If you see anything in the DVRs, leave us a comment. We've already, you know, got a couple things. Uh, which we're going to mention here in a, in a little bit, but uh, it's out there. We're going to leave it out there. Uh, it, it's, it's really cool. So you can actually watch it if you see anything come up. Uh, you know, if you see Mike and I coming into the frame, we're not apparitions. We were actually there. Well, I'm not. I don't know. My, we haven't proved him yet. But, um, you'll see where the teams went into the different locations and, and those ghosts. 
doing our EVP sessions and things like that. Um, but again, it's it's out there on our YouTube channel. Please take part in the ghost hunt. Uh, you can do it right from your own uh, living room, computer, wherever you're at, tablet. Uh, go watch it. Leave us a comment. But note the time uh, so we could go and pull it up. And if you see something we didn't, we haven't had a chance to watch all eight hours of it yet. At least right. I so have. We had four Maybe cameras. Andrew, right? and Is Andrea still on our, on our chat? Maybe Andrea watched all eight hours. <laughs> I just like to scroll to the part where we do the three breaks and we're explaining what we see, you know. You uh, like seeing yourself. Well, <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, I mean, okay. I just think it's a good part, you know. It's, it's, I just think it's exciting that, you know, people who aren't with us can actually be there with us. Even if they're in California or Arizona, we have friends in in New Jersey, you know, they can be watching these things while we're doing it here in Ohio, and maybe they can help us catch something we didn't catch at the time. Actually, it, it's really cool. It, you know, the technology that we use to do it, you don't want to know, but it was amazing. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over some of the um, personal experiences that we've had. Um, uh, before we get started with this stuff, let me just explain a little bit more. Dark Shadow Ghost Tours <coughs> is a little bit more than just us three. Uh, out of frame, you can't see her. She's working our chat lines and the questions over there. Um, say is, hi. Is, say hi. hi. There, they heard you. Um, <laughs> Lee's part of our team. Uh, Laura is, is part of our team. Uh, Kay is part of our team, and uh, Andrea is also uh, part of our team, too. Now, that's the core team. That's also Panic D and Divine Paranormal. Um, we have other members of Dark Shadow Ghost Tours that, that help us out with our murder mystery dinners, and when we do things like that, come on ghost hunts, too. Um, but uh, Dark Shadow Ghost Tours is just not Marianne and myself or just us. Three. I mean, it's, it's a, a group of people that um, we... We call them family. I mean, we have we a good time, do it and, and uh, I really look forward to all of our adventures. Um, so, to get started with some of the personal experiences, we're going to go over some personal experiences um, that we've had. Um, we're on air until nine o'clock, so in about twenty or about eight twenty, we're going to take a, a short break, um, and then we'll come back, finish the personal experiences. And then uh, Mary Ann's going to have our skeptic report because she's our uh, crew skeptic. Um, and then we'll, yeah, then we'll um, answer some of the questions. So while you're watching us now, please post your questions below. And uh, the last segment before we go off the air, we'll try to answer some of your questions. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we really didn't get anything Wednesday. No. no, Wednesday we went and uh, brought in the equipment for the presentations, That's the right. audio materials for our presentations, set up the screen uh, for our presentations on Thursday and Friday. But we didn't really go and set anything we didn't up have any anywhere else. Or right. Anything with that. So <clears throat> this is starting Thursday night. Now, although the ghost hunt was Saturday night, when you get a group of paranormal people together <laughs> in a haunted location, I don't care who you are, they're going to be doing some investigation. Whether they have a recorder in their pocket while they're running around run, pulling cables and putting stuff, something's going on. Okay, so Thursday during the during the day, right, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we had a field camera out in the building um, just, uh, just to see if something... We'll take pictures. We did have some pictures go off. Weren't too clear. Don't know what they were yet. Um, but on Thursday, while we were setting up, well, I wasn't. These guys were. Um, setting up the DV cameras, uh, DVR cameras. You guys heard some uh, strange noises. Did yeah, you? we set up four DVR cameras. We set up two upstairs and two in the basement. The upstairs ones were on the second floor in the radio room. And in the, the truckers, truckers union. union. That's right. I'm like, where was the other one? Uh, in the truckers union. 
when we were setting those ones up, we really didn't have any experiences at all. We didn't really notice anything out of the mm -hmm. ordinary. But when we went down in the basement to put those ones in, we yeah. did. Yeah, we were, we were mounting the one camera that was facing towards the furnace. the furnace room. And as we were mounting it up, uh, we heard something that was down there with us. And uh, me and Marianne looked at each other and uh, it was like... I said, you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. I mean, and it was coming from the area where there was a hole in the one wall where a young boy is said to be coming uh, out of and looking around and stuff like that. And that just matched right up with what we heard. Uh, and, you know, we didn't have anything with us to, to no. go check it out. And, uh, but that's when we were getting we the cameras. We had a flashlight, stuff. and that's pretty much mm -hmm. the majority of what we had. We had that and a drill. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And some tape. And lots of tape. We, we found that we really like tape. Yeah, so correct me if I'm wrong, but the paranormal claims for the location is uh, apparitions of children. In, in the, the basement, basement, in the area where the furnace room is, peeking in and out of the door frames there. Okay, so there's something there. Uh, now, Friday afternoon, we were having a problem with one of the DVR cameras. No, we weren't cameras. really having a Something. problem so much as I was watching the DVR on the big screen. And I was okay. watching it, and this one item, which had been there the whole time, it seemed like it would change shape almost as if it was being grayed out a little bit on the one side. And I didn't know what exactly it was that was down there to see if maybe it was something that could get jostled or whatever so I sent Lee downstairs <laughs> by herself but she's okay with that uh, I sent Lee downstairs to check it out and we had walkies and I you know was saying okay a little to the left a little more to the right no 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 back up you know and I'm trying to get her to be in the exact spot of where I wanted her to be to say what's right in front of you and she was in the dark of course she didn't have her flashlight with her and she kept hearing sounds behind her and you were able to see her in the DVR she'd go <laughs> and then she'd get back to her work you know but she did that several times and she said she kept hearing the sounds of maybe movement in the tunnels that would be connecting the what we call the tunnel room and the furnace room there's like a little tunnel area where all the tunnels are it's like a hallway and she said she could hear things moving back and forth in there but did she say there's a wall separating there's a brick wall and they're now closing off the yeah. one end well, you heard yeah. as if something you, yeah, was passing through there. Could walk right okay. right and this was outside the what we called the tunnel room yes the DVRs. yes between yeah. what we call the tunnel room and where the street would be outside okay um, you guys went and did some exploring <laughs> on, your, uh, did. on Friday, um, <coughs> and uh, or were you taking the field camper, moving the field camera or something? Well, I don't know, you guys were up in the building. Both. Something. We had gone. We had gone all over the place. We were taking Andrea. Andrea had not been in the building previous right. to this That's week. Right. Okay. So the first day she kind of went upstairs and saw the upstairs things. And so we did some things up there that on Friday. And then I said, okay, I'll take you in the basement. And so Lee and I and Andrea went down into so the basement. So you went down through the basement and came up into the tattoo Correct. room. Yes. Okay. And that's where you heard some footsteps? Yes. Or people walking around? Yes. So it had started to rain and the atrium, which is like a shaft that goes through the entire building from this, from the roof all the way down into the basement, we could hear that there was some water trickling in there. So I, of course, wanted to go see if I could see exactly where it was coming from, because that's me. Skeptic. Yeah. So I went up, we, we all went up the stairs from the basement into the tattoo parlor shop section. And we went over to the shaft opening, and we were looking in there, and as we're looking around, we could hear the raindrops, but then we also heard footsteps walking across the ceiling above us, but we thought it sort of sounded like it was in probably the radio room on the second floor. 
So I had a walkie with me, and of course I walkied uh, Sean, and I said, hey, did you guys go upstairs or send anybody upstairs? And Sean's response was, you have the keys. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have the keys to get upstairs, so. So, anyways. Um, that was quite interesting. There was, there was some footsteps that we definitely heard. All three of us heard it, and we're like, do those sound like footsteps to you? Yes, yes, they do. And so it was, it was pretty interesting. Yes, it was. Yeah. Okay, so moving on to the next one, uh, and this is the feeling of being watched. Now, if, if you've gone out on any type of paranormal investigation or just some places that have paranormal activity, even cemeteries, I mean, a lot of cemeteries, there's reports of, of being watched, things like that. This building definitely has that. I get that feeling up in the radio room. Uh, Andrea reported that uh, she got it in the atrium where it looked like people were looking out the windows um, down at them. But, uh, Mike, you get that feeling too. Oh, most, most definitely. I mean, uh, when you leave the street and walk that long staircase going up. Uh, by the time I get to the top landing there, you know, you can feel a little heaviness. You can feel that, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're not alone. You know, the building's looking at you. Uh, and that whole area there in that top landing, uh, heading back in toward the radio room, uh, the receiving room, you know, all that. I mean, you know, it's like, you can just feel the heaviness like, you know, there's there's something there and they want you to know that, you know, they got their eye on you. Yeah. Um, Lee, you had something with uh, in the tattoo room yes. where you thought something was like next to you? Yeah, I thought it was Marianne. We were, this was right before we heard the footsteps. Yeah, we were, we were looking at stuff. Yeah, Andrea, I and Lee were in there. And Andrea has to play with stuff all the time. That's one of her things. Everywhere I go, I swear. We're going to talk swear. about her because she's That's not right, here. That's right, she's not here. She, she can't say anything. But I swear, everywhere she goes, she finds something to, like, put on or play with. Especially if you give her a, a Kit Kat bar. Oh, yeah. She, she That's just like shared. catnip. <laughs> <laughs> but she, was, she found this walker, and she decided she was, wanted to take a picture of her walking with the walker you know and so i took a picture of picture her with at? it that's we on her camera oh. no she said it had to be on her camera so that we didn't use it for any of our uh, advertisement yep. things anymore she knows I'd be <laughs> that's that. right oh. so she was playing with that and i took her picture a couple of the pictures and lee was sort of in between us and uh at one point i moved away and, and a little further away towards the door of the tattoo shop and Lee didn't realize that I had done that and she was talking to me behind her. She thought that I was still behind her so there, she had the feeling that someone or something was behind her and she thought it was me but nice. I wasn't. She Then I answered her from over across this way and she's like, when did you, when did you move over there? <laughs> <laughs> so she had a feeling there as well. Now, you mentioned a couple of things with Andrea and the atrium, feeling things in the atrium. I didn't feel anything this week when I was there, um, but the second time I was there, when I would go upstairs uh, in the trucker's apartment on the third floor, there's a window that looks out into the atrium there, and I love standing and looking out that window. I, I just I call that my 227 window. If you guys remember the show on TV in the 80s, 227, the ladies would all hang out their windows and chat at each other. That's what I feel whenever I'm there. I'm like that these people are hanging out the window chatting with each other and that, that I should be part of that. And so I, I'm always drawn right there to that area. So, again, in that atrium shaft, so the feelings of... So it doesn't push you out the window. That would be you. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Well, we're going to take a five-minute break. We are live, so we've got to fill our coffee back up. Um, and we will be back in about five minutes to continue on with uh, J.C. Thompson building... After tour. After tour. 2015. 2015. <laughs> <laughs>
We're All back. Right, we're back. Did you miss us? <laughs> oh, yeah. Is it? Is now it we're back. We're back. Now we're back. We're back. Did you not? Did you not put us on screen? I didn't clip them. Oh my. Yeah. You know, hey. That's all right. I guess we'll keep you. We fire love. me. <laughs> we wouldn't fire you. We love you. <laughs> all right. So let's get back to our discussion. Um, yeah, again, we were going through some of our personal experiences from the J.C. Thompson house that we just did this past week. And do you believe while we took a break, we were talking about this, too? So yeah. we got a couple more things that we're going to add to the show here to, to the end that we kind of forgot when we planned this out. So... But, uh, all right, the next thing I have on the list here is smells, okay? Um, the smell of, well, I'll let Marianne talk about it. Go ahead. Oh, I get to talk about it. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, again, as I said, when we were pretty much by ourselves uh, in between things, Andrea, Lee, and I, we kind of went and explored a lot. Uh, and on this particular occasion, I can't remember. We've been talking about it. Don't remember why, but Andrea and Lee went upstairs to the second floor first before me, and then I joined them afterwards. Uh, and so I came up the stairs and uh, come through the front door there. I said, this is me, guys, you know, so that they would know it was me. But when I got up to the top of the stairs, Lee and Andrea are like, do you smell anything? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. So they said, come over here and smell over here and tell me what you smell. And I said, I don't know. I can't really tell that I'm smelling anything in particular. I, it, I could tell that it was a little bit different from the stairwell par portion to right there in front of the doors where the radio room and the um, radio sitting room what did we call that the receiving room no the radio theory. receiving room yes. uh, I could tell that there was a difference in the scent but it wasn't anything dramatic and I wasn't able to pick anything specific out uh, I said why what did you guys smell and they said they thought that both of them smelled lilacs so I don't know if some of the old residents uh, used to wear lilac perfume or if they had lilacs around, I don't know. But they definitely both said that they <coughs> smelled lilacs and then that it went away. Yeah, that was a popular scent, lilac and uh, roses, rose water. And yeah, but we didn't, they didn't smell roses or rose water. They said it was specifically lilac and both of them agreed that it was lilac smell. So Interesting. Yes. All right, so this next one is actually <sighs> intriguing. Intriguing. <clears throat> I was impressed with this one. Um, I think all of us experienced it uh, the first time it happened, which was Friday night, Friday night <clears throat> when I said that uh, we did a, a presentation on living in a uh, haunted house. And... At the end of that, Mike does a presentation on blessings, cleansings, crossings, and things of that nature. When he started talking about crossings, all kinds of stuff started going on. The first thing that I believe that we recognized was a light in the resource room came on. Now... This light has no switch. They can't turn it on. It's never been on. It it, it doesn't work. Uh, they I tried. Sarah's husband put in a brand new bulb uh, just to check the thing uh, when he first went in there, and the light has never worked since they've been there. And they've been there two and a half years or so. So in those the time that they've had the building, they haven't had anything with that light at all so i don't know whether they were kind of like worried whether we were going to do a crossing or a cleansing or something but <clears throat> during that conversation when sarah was there because you did the same presentation the night before mm -hmm. but sarah wasn't there um and sarah has made that claim too that 
that when certain people come and talk to her about certain things that she hears knocks or noises and that kind of like tells her yes or no or something like that. But while Sarah was there and you were talking about crossings, that light came on. And then what happened the next day? The very next day, Lee and I got there to open up and get things set up for Saturday. And as we normally do, we unlocked it, we walked inside, and we both were like, hello, it's us, Mike and Lee, we're here. Hello, uh, just letting you know that we're back. And I think Lee j had just finished, and that same light, which was a CFL light, or CFI light, whatever they call them, little curly the ones. It, you know, it takes a second for them to warm up. Uh, it instantly came on full blast, like it was saying, hi, hello, I see you. Uh, and it came on, it stayed on for a minute, it went back off, and we said thank you, and it never came back on again. So if you're a group that's going to investigate the J.C. Thompson building, which, by the way, um, if you saw the ads that were flipping, there was a phone number. We'll get that again and, and tell you the phone number. But get a hold of Sarah. She's a wonderful lady, and it's a great place to investigate. But if you're going to investigate that location, it's the, it's the light that is towards the windows. It's, like, right in front of the windows of the Liberty Tax Office. That so used to be there. if yeah. you walk into the front doors of the resource room, it's the light all the way to the right on the ceiling fan. Um, so if you want to do some investigation there, test some things out yourself, ask them to turn the light on. It'd be kind of interesting if uh, if other people get that that same response. Or now, maybe they just really like Mike. You know, Mike's the man. <laughs> Mike well, is the man. Well, I get in and I talk to him about, you know, blessings. I get in there and I talk to him about... Uh, performing exorcisms. Uh, I think you made them nervous. And then, you know, uh, right in between when we were talking about exorcisms and we were talking about uh, crossings, you know, uh, they were like, hey, here I am. No, don't don't include me in that. Yeah, I think you made them nervous. Yeah, but I think when he came back the second day and, and you know, yeah, they responded, I think they realized he's not going to make me do anything I don't want to do. Right. Um, and I think you reassured him, too, during the presentation. Oh, no, we're just talking about it. We're not going to. Yeah. Um, now, like I said, during that presentation, it stirred up all kinds of stuff because Marianne was running a computer for Mike, and, and she was supposed to play uh, uh, some EVPs uh, recordings during I his presentation. Mike and I'm just sitting in the chair, like, watching the presentation because I love to hear my man Mike talk. You know, I'm just sitting there, <laughs> and uh, I did my bit. Light comes on. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. I think Mike did it himself. But anyway, <laughs> I look over, and um, Marianne's supposed to hit the cue. Mike's, like, looking at her. And they're looking at their, meaning Andrea and Marianne. And Lee. Were, were you, were you, North North North? So you were sitting in front. She was innocent this time. They're yeah, looking at the laptop next to it at the DVR because yeah. there's something going on. And... What it was, was there was a mist that came into the furnace room. Like I said, if you go online and watch our, our DVR, um, you find it and note the times, uh, you can actually see this mist in the in the furnace room. This happened at the same, it's happened, it happened twice. It that happened we during know, the ghost that we hunt, noticed. And it happened during Mike's uh, presentation. But, um, the one. Yeah, well, happened. we were doing like that. that. We were watching his presentation, and that happened. And Andrea and I are like, did, did you see that, like, stuff <laughs> come across? It was, like, white, and it, and it covered, like, half. It came in from, from the left side of the, the it's camera. Like a fog. It, it like, like, rolled in like a fog, and then it went back out. And it did it, like, three or four times while I'm supposed to be queuing up Mike. Yeah. And so I wasn't paying attention to Mike. And, uh. We're great people. We're just <laughs> but then the next day, the next day during our ghost hunt, we noticed it happen again during one of our breaks. 
uh, from ghost hunting, and Andrea wasn't able to hunt. She was there the days previous for all the tours and That's the right. events. That's right. She saw and us. She, no online. she noted it online, and she's like, "Hey, did you see the mist came back again?" And I'm like, "Yes, I just saw that." You know, so, so she was able that, to see it too. Video, yeah. You know, if you guys want to go see. Now, eventually, we're going to go through and pull that out. One thing I want to mention too. Um, First of all, we haven't gone through all of our evidence because there's, like, how many of us were there hunting that night? Gosh. Mm. We had, Lots. We had quite a few. Um, at least 12, at least a, 10, at 12. Least, I was going to say at least okay. a dozen. Uh, every one of us had recorders. We had uh, the field camera going. We had the DVR. We had all kinds of stuff going, and this was just last week. So, um <clears throat> Preparing for the show, getting everything, we, we haven't had a chance to go over everything. But I, I do want to mention that uh, any EVPs, videos, things like that, I, I mentioned before that we're going to post them on Dark Shadow Ghost Tours Facebook page. Um, we might put some links to them, but actually where they're going to be located is on Divine Paranormal's uh, webpage. So it's divineparanormal.com. There's two things that we have on there. There's an EVP collection. And there's a case management. And under the case management, that's where we're going to post all of our evidence and then we'll cross link it to uh, Panic B. But um, so in the future, check that out. And then we'll post on our social network when we get everything done. And yep, just hit stuff. the case manager and go to that page. And you scroll down, you'll Thompson see all the, all the cases that we've been investigating uh, that we have evidence and links to. And just Go on down, hit J.C. Thompson, and it'll play for you. Uh, if you click on something that is a private investigation, you, it's not going to take you in. Yeah, it won't let you in there unless you blow them in. Um, so this happened at the same time during Mike's uh, presentation. Uh, <laughs> do you want to explain this? This is the Andrews. Well, I was sitting there uh, watching now like because i kind of got in trouble for not watching just previously so i'm sitting there and i'm watching mike's presentation and andrea leans over and she's like somebody just whispered hi in my ear i thought it was lee but i looked over and she wasn't doing anything and so i looked over at lee too and she's and and lee's just looking at us like what you know because lee literally was so trying so hard to watch mike's presentation and <laughs> i was trying to get him to be quiet <laughs> <laughs> but she she said that she was she heard somebody whisper in her right ear hi just a whisper but hi and she thought it was lee trying to get her attention for something and it wasn't I, I'm just stalling for this next one. Oh, because you didn't hear the rest. You didn't hear the rest of it, though, because we were. Yeah. Andrea was sitting right in front of some place where Mike had actually noticed something oh, earlier yes. that day. There's more to that story. Mike. Yes. Earlier, um, I was sitting in one of the chairs and I was looking uh, toward that direction. And at first, I noticed something off to my left against the wall by this one old antique dresser Sarah has in there. And I, I, I seen a, look like a young man standing there. And uh, I looked away and looked back and, and it was gone. And when I looked back over uh, to my right, at the top of the stairs that lead into the basement, uh, there's a doorway there. And that is where we had the table set up with all the audio and video equipment. And that's where Andrea was sitting. And right to that table was putting off some energy. Oh, oh I'm sure that there was enough electrical <laughs> stuff on that table. Right behind where Andrea was sitting uh, earlier in the day, I had seen a gentleman standing there leaning against that wall. Uh, and I seen him there repeatedly off and on for a little while. And, you know, so right where I seen him standing is where Andrea was sitting. And it was probably, it could very well have been him, whoever he was, that leaned over and told Andrea hi. You know, just making himself known. 
Yeah, and Mike had mentioned to me earlier when, when I got there that he had seen this, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. I wish it was me. But uh, when Andrea did that, I didn't even think about it until later when Andrea said that she had heard hi, and, and I mentioned we mentioned it to Mike, and he's like, that's where I saw the guy. Mm -hmm. So pretty interesting. Okay, so before we try this next thing, I want to try you some, uh, try to show you guys some photos. Okay, uh, but before we do that, I want to give you a phone number. If you're uh, interested in uh, renting out the uh, J.C. Thompson Building for a paranormal investigation, what you want to do is get a hold of Sarah. Her phone number is three three zero three six eight zero five nine zero. Again, that is three three zero three six eight zero five nine zero. Um, I highly recommend. I mean, you guys too. It's an extremely interesting oh, building, yes. and we didn't really tell you any of the history of the building oh, here. That, uh, we did that, that on, night. On it's it's really like three buildings that are kind of stuck together as one, and it's it's just awesome. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna try to. We're going to try something here. If it doesn't work, if we lose audio, I'm going to explain what we're going to do first. And then uh, if we lose audio, then uh, bear with us. Uh, orb pictures, okay? Photos of orbs. If you're in the paranormal field or follow anything paranormal, you know that it's highly controversial about Photos with orbs in it. Oh, that's fake. That's camera flare. That's rain. That's dust. That's this. That's that. Okay. Um, what we do is when we're out during an doing an investigation, we have somebody say, you know, please hold up your hand or whatever. Could you please put an orb or something in somebody's hand? Okay. Now. If that orb appears in the hand or around the hand or something like that, it could be paranormal because it'd be kind of hard to say, could you put an orb in my hand and a piece of dust comes down and just floats right there or a bug or something like that, okay? Um, if it cannot be explained, it's paranormal. Now, when we take photos, we take at least three photos, eight to ten seconds apart, now, mind you, during an investigation, it's pitch black, okay? So, a flash is going to go off. And, boy, are they bright when it's in Very the middle bright. of an investigation. You're like, flash, coming up. Um, so, we were in the tunnel room, right? The tunnel room. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lee and Laura were snapping pictures. And I said, or did you guys say, or asked me, I don't remember which one it was said, you know, hold out your hand, let's see if we could put an orb in the hand. Now, the first picture that they took, nothing, it's just me look, looking goofy like this, okay? The second picture, I if you it. look really close, there is actually a small, tiny orb in my hand. The third picture, a bigger orb, like, on my armpit, okay? Um, yeah, baby. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to try to show you these. Hopefully it works. Hopefully it works. It might take him a second. He's flipping around on like five screens over there right now. Okay, so hopefully you can still hear us. I think they can. Yep, yep, fine. Okay, so that's the first picture. Where he's delivering a pizza. Can okay. you? Okay. Second picture, if you look real close right there, you see a tiny little orb. And there's one starting about, uh, oh my. Near your Nipple. lapel, yeah. <laughs> And then it's real big right there on my armpit. Now those pictures were... But the other one went away. And then the other little one went away. Um, so, those uh, 
those pictures were taken about eight to ten seconds apart, right? And we asked, could you please place an orb there? So, to me, you know, I'll, I'm speaking for the team, but I'm gonna I'm gonna ask everyone else: Would we consider that to be some sort of evidence? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I I would say, yeah, you know, there's a general line of thinking out there that. Uh, if you're going to identify an orb as a spirit or an energy, that it has three parts. And what you look for is the outer ring of the orb, if it's like fuzzy. And uh, if it's like fuzzy and, um, you know, that that's a good sign. And then the second part is the inside uh, is is not solid you know it's a it's a lighter shade uh and that meets both of that and that it's not a uh it's not a a solid dense firm uh picture where you know which usually results off of moisture or something like that there or dust when it's reflecting back the the camera flash, you know, because the flash will make it appear, it'll it'll light it right up and make it look solid. Uh, but supposedly, if it's energy that it's not reflecting it back, you know, it's actually absorbing it. So the the center of the orb will be somewhat light, and you'll the main ring on the outside will be fuzzy but you'll actually be able to tell the separation see now this one here i mean it's not like a what's weird it's not like a full circle you know if you look at real close at the bottom it's like it's like flat on the bottom which is kind of different you know so yeah and if it and if it's a bug they usually you know are oh, a little yeah. more o oval than round more oblong shaping so All right, I was going to try it. I don't think it's going to work because we had some audio problems. Well, we'll put this one close. No, I was going to try to play a, a video. Oh. But uh, video? on our YouTube channel, I actually posted this video before the show. Um, and it's actually out there just in case uh, that... We couldn't play it. Uh, I lost my page. Okay. But um, down in the furnace room, this was this was late, but you guys got the same thing. Down in the furnace room, we were getting a lot of activity. Uh, we tried the SB7. Did you guys try the SB7? I know yes. I asked you. Yeah, okay. this was Saturday night. We tried night. the SB7 to get communications down in the furnace room late Saturday night. Um, and... We really weren't getting much down there. This is like in the middle of the building, down in the basement, which, you know, uh, if we got something on SB7, it would have been really cool. But we're sitting there, and we're doing the session, and I had K2 meter sitting there and Mel meter sitting there, and uh, we're asking questions as normal. And then Mike started asking questions about family. And I noticed, because it was a small room and it's loud, that if you've done an SB7, you know they're noisy. The tone of the SB7 kind of changed, and I and I mentioned to Mike. I said, "Keep asking questions about family." We were getting K2 hits like mad, like crazy. And actually, in that video, towards the end, um, I asked the question: uh, "If you're still here with us, can you light that up to completely red?" And in a matter of like two seconds, it pegged it again. And then went back down. Now, if you watch the video, that's that's on our YouTube channel. I'm not even going to try to play it now, but um, you can see I have the Mel meter sitting next to the K2. Uh, the K2 keeps pegging and responding to the questions and things like that. The Mel meter fluctuates from 0.1 to 0.2, but I, I think I had it turned down so it wasn't matching what the K2 was. But there was definitely uh, 
something going on there. And the interesting thing about that furnace room, like I said, it's in the basement, in the middle of the building. It's not going to pick up. None of us had cell phones on us. It's not going to pick up any. I don't even think there was electric down there. Um, but you guys had something similar going on in that room too, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Uh, we went down in there, the second place we investigated was in the furnace room, and we had K2s out, we had SB7, SB7 we got nothing, it did not like that, the entities there did not like SB7 in there at all for sure, uh, but the K2s, again, just like you were saying, all the way to red, uh, lighting up all the lights, pretty consistently, we'd ask questions and it would light up. But one thing that I noticed was we tried several times to find out if we were talking to a boy or girl, a male or a female, and no matter when we asked those questions in the midst of other, you know, questions, we kept going back to it, it would never respond. The K2 would just sit there and do absolutely nothing. We would give it some time and still do absolutely nothing. We'd ask another question, bam, all the way to red or whatever. And then we'd ask about the boy or girl or male or female again and nothing. So it definitely didn't like that question. Well, you know, we, we went over and uh, when we were down there, you know, the furnace room, you know, is where we were getting the mist. You know, uh, that was in the furnace room. And it was, and the K2 hits that we were getting, it wasn't like there was any little uh they weren't bumping up halfway or just barely ticking over to yellow uh the answers were like quick and they were like it was pegged all the way i mean red bang just non-stop and we did some of the, we had two k2s in our group and we had okay if you like you want to answer this we did it on one guy and we had another guy um uh, across from him you know which one Mm -hmm. And we would get them responding on one and not the other. Really? Yeah. I but I didn't have a video camera on me. Yeah. I want to go back and <laughs> put K2s back yeah. in there. If we, could, if we could duplicate that, that's that's unbelievable. Again, if you're a paranormal group and you rent the J.C. Thompson building, please try that and let us know. Yeah. We would love to have that Definitely. information on Panic D. Yeah. Um, now, as you know, if you look at the clock, we're running over a little bit. So what? want to leave go ahead we're going to stick around and finish the show here it's our first one we're going to dial it in but um we got one more thing that we're going to talk about we're going to take another break we're going to come back and answer questions we got a couple more things to talk about we got the debunk report from the skeptic over there and then we'll wrap it up <laughs> um next thing we're going to talk about this is originally um the girls we'll call them the girls because they are girls <laughs> yeah uh they're, they, you guys had a blast, didn't you? Yeah, I think yeah, we, fun. I think we roamed okay. around that building for hours. <laughs> uh, uh, they went up to change out the location. We were moving the field the camera. Field camera. Yeah, we they had checked decided. a couple things, and, and they decided to take recorders up and leave them up there. Okay, <clears throat> two separate recorders uh, caught the same EVP. Now. Originally, Andrea reported this, and Andrea, we didn't get a chance to tell you this, so we know you're watching now, so I want you to, to try this. Mm -hmm. um, you posted it on our private group page that you caught an EVP that said, uh, hello, and it sounded like a cat. Okay? Like a meow. Like a meow. All right. Mike went and ran that through uh, Audacity, slowed it down a little bit, and it's actually a woman saying... Get out! Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Just you sound just like it too. <laughs> <laughs> that was my past life, you know. But yeah, it, it sounds like a cat at full speed. Uh, but when you just sit there and boost the gain a little bit and slow it down, uh, it just comes out. I mean, it's it, it's very very clear. But it, it goes from meow to Get out, you know, and and sometimes too when you catch capture EVPs. I mean, spirits are not in the same time run that we were in, um, you know, in theory. Okay, but it might sound like a, a bark or meow or something like that. And just you know, if you take the time, this is what fast. takes time. 
is, uh, you know, you take time and tweak it a little bit. It's not a class A because you had to modify it, but um, tweaking a little bit, there's, there's something there. So um, we're going to take a short break, another five minutes, and... Were you going to try to play that EVP or no? I don't know. We might try it. We might try it when we come back? We might give it a try. We'll All see. right. Okay, so let's try this again. Hopefully the computers don't crash. In four. <laughs>
All right, we're back for our last segment of the show for tonight. I hope you're enjoying it so far. I hope you're enjoying it too. If you are, please leave us a comment. If you want us to keep doing these things, uh, when we started after the tour, it was when we take large groups out, we have a private uh, Facebook page and we let the groups go on, post their evidence, things like that. Um, I kind of like doing this. Kind of you fun. know. And hopefully some of the people that were there on uh, uh, tour with us uh, hopped on. It's got some questions and uh, maybe can uh, share some of their evidence if they got some too. we got to give a shout out to Dave. Our man Dave, he was there. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Investigation stuff. Was he with you? He was, yeah, with, he was me. with He you. was in my room. Was he one of the guys with the K2? He sure was. <laughs> Dave's a great Dave guy. is the great K2 guy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so, what we're going to do is, see, I'm only good till about maybe 1, 30, 2 o'clock, okay? <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm just going to, now I'm going to say, I'm just going to sit and watch DVRs. You guys go do whatever. Um, and I'm not real good with steps. Now, the J.C. Thompson building is steps, after steps, after steps. I mean, actually, you go down... If you want to go to the tattoo part, you go down steps, you go through the basement, up steps and everything. And it's multiple floors, too. So what we did was we had two teams. We had three uh, sessions. First session, uh, one team was in the basement, one was on second floor. Second session, we switched. Third session was the third floor, and I'm like, I'm done. I'm sitting watching the DVRs. <laughs> Sarah actually came out, and I think that was the first time she went out ghost hunting. The first time she, building, well, awesome. it was the first time she did a whole night. A whole night. Yes, okay. a an whole nighter. Night. So she was with me. She was spent, too. So we <laughs> actually sat down in the resource room, was watching the DVRs. Um, we didn't have cameras, though, up on the third floor. But these guys went up to the third floor. So tell us what you guys got up there. The third floor of the building was the old East Liverpool brothel. Uh, so the apartments are up there where the working ladies spent their evenings. And there is a kitchen at the end of the hall. And the kitchen overlooks the atrium. And... And let me just say, I'm going to break in here while you collect your thoughts there. The lady breaking in was the one just complaining that we went over 9 o'clock. But, oh, go ahead, break in. <laughs> yes. He makes me so nervous when we go up there into the kitchen because he always sits on the ledge of the window that, like, his back is to the uh, atrium and it's an open window and we're on the third floor and he just makes me so nervous like he's gonna fall out that window but he does it every time <coughs> we go there I think he just does it to see if like I have a heart attack I don't know but anyway that's where he was sitting yeah <laughs> you know we we weren't uh, we weren't having much activity we always get we always get responses in the kitchen always I mean it never fails I mean the flashlight, uh, if you do flashlight sessions, that's a great place. They always work the flashlights. Uh, SB7, uh, it's pretty good, too. Uh, when we were there, we weren't, we weren't getting much. Uh, and then I started doing an SB7 session, and Dave put down his flashlight, and... Me and Dave got into a bidding war for one of the ladies of the evening. Uh, and I think we talked about that. Did we talk about that? That night, we yeah, that absolutely. Night? Yeah, we that sure was like <laughs> 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. We were like, yeah. Oh, yeah. The third was floor fun. was between 2 and 3 a.m. So, yeah. And yeah. The, the, the flashlight was, was going on <laughs> in, on cue. It was on. And then it wasn't wasting any time. It was off. And then on full blast off, getting a lot of responses from the, uh, on the SB7. Um, we, didn't, we didn't get video, did we? No. no. You're our video guy. I know. <laughs> our batteries were done. 
That's yeah, it. It was, it was late. But I mean, next time, back up. What a way to, what a way to end the investigation, yeah. though. Uh, you know, and my final bid was three dollars, and I expected Dave to go to four. Now I would have gone as high as four seventy-five, but no, Dave went straight from three to five. What a rat, <laughs> you know, and. <clears throat> So, but he didn't get anything out of it. No, it, we tried. Yeah, he told he he told us that he we left him in a room for last. We said he'd have to go out last. And he said that uh, that was fine. You know, uh, he kept asking for a hug uh, for his five dollars, and then he said that if he would have got a hug, it, he would have gone from being the last person out of the building to being the first person out of the building. No. Uh, but he was denied. He was denied. Was Shot denied. down. <laughs> no you know. hugs for him. Yeah, I just noticed something. We're wearing dark shadow ghost to which color. That we are. It's kind of cool. <laughs> you notice that? <laughs> All right. Oh, anyway. Sure. All right. Are we going on to yeah. mine? All right. My segment? We're going on to Marianne, the skeptics segment. And this is called the Deepon Report. So, Marianne, take it away. All right. So, on the uh, day before the hunt, so on Friday, when we were listening to different sounds as we were going through the building, we kept hearing a boom, boom. And I'm like, oh, I wonder what that is. And then I said, I wonder if it's like that if there's something like in the road that it's running over. And it's like, I looked out the door from the tattoo shop and I didn't see anything. Second day, same thing. In the basement, every everywhere we went, we kept hearing Boom, boom. But it wasn't all the time. It was intermittent, but was always the boom, boom. And it sort of sounded metallic-y, but I wasn't quite 100% sure on it. Everybody thought that it was, you know, somebody tapping on something. We went up to the tattoo shop. I looked out the door again, looked into the street, didn't really see anything. But on break, uh, one of the other... Uh, people that was in the group that was with me when I was asking them, hey, do you think that there's anything in the street that's doing this? Went out, actually, we saw in the street, there's a manhole cover there. And the one guy says, I wonder if it's this. And he starts jumping on it, and you can hear in it. In the middle do. of the street. Yeah, in the middle of the street. But it was like... You could get away uh, with that stuff at 2, 3 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a car that came by. We made him move off to the side. But it, it was really pretty simple. But he did. He jumped on the manhole cover, and you could hear it and it made the same exact sound. So we debunked that that night. Those bump bumps that you hear in the basement of the JC Thompson house, it's actually cars that are going past and actually hitting that that manhole cover. So it's nothing paranormal. So that's my else? debunk report. Um, not not for JC Thompson house. I didn't really I know it, I mean we tried to debunk some other things during the day when Lee when I sent Lee in the basement by herself for number, but uh, never did find out why that was moving, so I couldn't debunk that at all. So just the manhole cover this time, Sean. So if you're there investigating and you hear the boom, boom. Uh, it's the manhole cover. Um, all right, so we are going to answer some questions. questions we did get some questions that come in and um he's gonna Lee, shout them out can you fire away okay someone wants to know what do you think is the most active spot in the building you want to take that one mr Marker? the most active spot in the building uh do i have to limit it to just one the most active. <laughs> All right. Well, I would have to say. I would have to say the furnace room brothel. Uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. There's there's actually two. The, very active. Yeah. The, the the furnace room. Uh, this time around, the K two meter was that was amazing, uh, and then we. We have video of the mist forming and moving through uh, on several occasions. And then... The reports of the child. The child, yeah. That's not room two. Yeah. 
and then you go up to the brothel and every time i mean it, the, the kitchen and the brothel is just it's never let us down i mean uh the flashlight always comes on you get responses uh you know there's just a lot of energy uh so i i have to say this time this time was the yeah, furnace this room. time this but time overall, was the furnace room overall i think we get a lot more out of the brothel kitchen but right. i think this time this time with the uh, with the k2 hits the mist the 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 sounds of but possibly that that little boy i think all that yeah i, I would have to say yeah, the furnace room, you win. Once you guys agreed that it was more active this time that we were there. Oh, yeah. Yes, than, absolutely. Than before. Um, over the winter, uh, Sarah had a group. What's the name of the group? Northern Panhandle. Northern Panhandle Ghost Hunters. Yeah. They went in every pretty month regularly. over the winter pretty regularly and investigated. And this gets back to when I started about our theory that when a place is investigated more um that activity picks up so i'm i'm anxious to actually go back yeah. in a little while after other groups have been there you know and it i think it helped you know we had uh we were the, we, we were there early on wednesday to set up uh so our group was there but then we had we had a nice amount of people that were in our Thursday, Friday, Saturday, between the seminars, the ghost hunt, and all the, the tours. tours during the day and that. So there was a constant influx of energy, and you know, you never know what it stirs up. Uh, but I did think that really helped. Did you pump on the third floor? Did you use your hand? Yes. We did in we the did truckers union. On the truckers but we didn't union apartment. Really? The trucker's apartment, we did use the yeah. EM And we didn't get any real activity in the trucker's well, side. I mean, that we EDP. noticed yeah, yeah. immediately. But that's the only place yeah. we used it, yeah. yeah. But I, I think that uh, us being there for several days in a row, they kind of also, I think it helps that, you know, if there's something, which... I'm the skeptic. If, if there's something there, I think that the longer... She's starting to turn. <laughs> I think that, that we were there a longer period of time, they get to know you a little bit better. And the more often you come back, they're, I, I think they'd be more willing to chat and participate. And I think we saw that Saturday. Yep. What else you got? Okay. Bob wants to know how much they charge to do uh, investigation. Um, I... I think it's two fifty. I think the best yes. thing you could do is get a hold of Sarah. Three three zero three six eight zero five nine zero. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, can you say that phone number again? Three three zero three six. Slower. Three three zero three six eight zero five nine zero. Um. There's. I think it's eight to two. Something like that. Oh, p eight p.m. to two a.m. Eight p.m. to two p. Uh, but you could pay extra for more time. Right. Uh, now I do have to say this. <coughs> tell Sarah you heard it here. Yeah. Tell her. Yeah. Referral. Okay. <laughs> um, Sarah uses the money um, from the paranormal investigators that come in. It all goes directly into the building. Okay. For example, um, through Panic D and some of our other broadcasts, she had some groups contact her from somewhere on the other side of the state. They're actually there tonight investigating. Right. That money that she's bringing in for that is actually going to help pay to replace her water meter that blew up over the winter. And she had, what, a couple feet of water in the basement? Three feet. Three feet of water. So, um, every anything we can do to help Sarah is, is you know, we're, we're game for. Um, but please, if, if you want some place to go investigate, this, this place is great. And that money helps her renovate the building. She owns the building outright, um, just has to pay the taxes on it. 
it's a it's a gorgeous building and, and she's doing the right thing I mean, she's taking care of it and trying to renovate it and bring it back she wants to put some stuff in there uh, yeah we want to do some uh, art classes in there. art classes things like that uh, she is having a little bit of issues of, of opening up businesses and things like that because it's not power everywhere and, and fire up the code and all that stuff but hey if you're a hardcore paranormal investigator it doesn't matter anyways um, but you know give her a call okay Carla wants to know what was all in the building we've talked about the tattoo shop and the brothels well I know if you had any ideas what all was there it's, <laughs> it's been a, about a million things and I did have uh, some note cards and things that I was I was using for myself uh, while we were giving tours of the building throughout the week getting all the history right and everything but uh, it, it's been pretty much anything you can imagine it was uh, JC, JC Thompson's home uh, it was apartments it was a tattoo shop it was tax shop lawyers offices a butcher shop uh, radio station Offices for the Morning Journal, it was a hotel, a brothel, a speakeasy, store. a grocery store, uh, sleeping rooms, uh, telemarketing office. So it was pretty much everything. You know, if you if you can imagine it, at some point it was part but of it's, it. But it's four buildings that's fused together. Three. 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 Three, Three buildings. Three. Yeah, there actually, were a couple of fires. Yeah, they, the buildings all actually come together now. <laughs> and form that atrium, which is just a, a big square chute going all the way from the basement straight on up to outside, all the way up through in between all these buildings where they come together. Is that completely open? It's the not completely a, open, but there's, skylight. there's a skylight, skylight up there. It has a, a hole in, I think, the one part of the skylight. And between the uh, telemarketing room of the radio side of the building uh, on the second floor and the Lowe's building on the second floor, you can actually see a little shaft of mm -hmm. light where the two buildings have, uh, come together. So that's pretty cool. I the like atrium is really kind of neat. Like when you run across that, especially in the daytime, when you stand there and you're like, this it's is just, like the outside of the and building in the middle of the, the, the building. It's really, and it's all brick and you see the windows and the fire escapes and everything. Well, I don't know where they're going to go now while they're there, but... Um, <laughs> It's it's quite interesting. Yeah. You could you could just picture it like in a uh, like in a movie back uh, in the days like in the twenties and thirties where everybody sat there and sat on their window sills and and talked and conversed amongst each other and yelled, "Hey, Ricky!" You know, uh, you know, you you, you, all, <laughs> you almost expect to see. You know, when you look up there, you expect to see people sitting on the sills. Uh, you well, know, Andrea said that she felt that. When she was there. And Somebody I always, and, and I, I call it 227, you call it. Hey, Ricky. Hey, Ricky. Hey, Ricky. <laughs> I call it the brothel. I mean, I want to say hi to the ladies, you know. Uh, oh, where else can you get a good time for 50 cents, oh, you know? Gosh. But, uh, yeah, it, it it's a real vintage look, and I mean, it really does. Uh, I know it puts me in the mood of uh, being back in time. Yeah, and it's been everything. Okay, one more question. Joe Where's that from? Huh? Where's it from? The last question? Yeah. I think, I, I think it was Carla. Well, what's the oh, last question? Oh, Joe? Yeah. yeah. I didn't look to see where he was from. Oh, Sorry, okay. I missed that. Part. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> She's been busy writing all them down. <laughs> think she knows everything? <laughs> well, yes, I do. I have to watch. Hey, we got to give Lee credit because we were, you know, like I said, this is our first one. We're going to play with it and tweak it and make it. But we're taking questions through Twitter and YouTube and Facebook, and I mean, they're coming in from everywhere. But she's been watching them and collecting them together and writing them down. So, last question Do you know any of the names of the entities that might be in the building? Well, as far as I know, none of us that have been investigating actually got a name officially through any EVPs or anything like that. I hope that at some point we might find that. Uh, I know that this week when we were there, my group at least, I we tried to figure out if it was Eric. Uh, in the 
they, they have one confirmed death in the building that's on record. Uh, it was from one of the fires. He was rooting through the ashes and debris, and one of the walls gave way and crushed in on him, sent him all the way from the main floor through to the basement, and he died. His name was Eric Speargarden. So that was, yeah, that was the first fire in 1909, I think it was. Um, was he the entity in the basement or, or the entity that Mike saw? I don't know. We don't really know as far as I'm aware of any specific entity name. Sounds like we got a job but, to go back and find out. Yeah. I'm game. You're game? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But maybe it was him, maybe it wasn't. Yeah. Hopefully we'll find out some of the names as they get to know us a little bit better. We hope you enjoyed the show. Um, we'd like to do some more for you. In fact, we are going to do some more. Next week, our uh, group, our entire group, is heading out to Gettysburg. Uh, we're going to be staying at a farm that we run in that's actually has, it's on the battlefield. So uh, we're going to be setting up the DBRs and doing some investigation. We're investigation at the Jenny Wade house and the orphanage. Uh, we're trying to line up a couple others. Um, but we'll be investigation, in, sorry, investigating where we are staying. And we're going to be coming on and uh, giving you some updates. And we might even broadcast a whole uh, live investigation one night. Um, we'll try. We'll try. From uh, Gettysburg. But stay tuned and join us for the next episode of Dark Shadow Ghost Tours After Tour. Thanks for watching, everybody. Yep. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>